welcome to the world of probiotic foods. This is Cultured Food Life with your host, Donna Schwenk. Welcome, everybody. We are going to talk about eating probiotic foods and will it make any difference in your life? And I have so many wonderful stories from people that tell me um, how much these foods have helped them and my own stories with my family, my friends, and uh, the last 16 years of my life, I've seen some miraculous thing. But the more wisdom and understanding you have about something, the more likely you are to um, include it in your life, um, actually make it a lifestyle habit. And so that's what these shows are as an attempt to help you have some wisdom behind why you would eat these foods or or why you would include them in your life and what is actually happening in the body um, when you consume them and what do they do. I had an interesting thing happen to me. Well, it wasn't to me, it was to my husband this week. He, uh, about a week or a half ago, he, he fell. Um, he was helping my son move. And he fell and he caught himself. And he doesn't actually remember falling, but he remembers all of a sudden standing up and seeing his finger turn sideways. And uh, he looked at it. And being the kind of man he is, he looked at it and goes, that's not right. And so he pulled it up and jammed it back into place. And it was literally going in the opposite direction his finger should go. Well, when he turned it over, he saw that, um, he thought he saw bone. There was, it has been ripped open where his, the base of his finger towards his hand. And uh, so he went to the, I think he went to a uh, emergency center where they have like, you know, on a call health place. And he, um, and what had happened was when he got there, he, the physician had told him, he said, you, um, that's not bone, that's a ligament. And you, uh, stretch the ligament so much that it broke the bone uh, or fractured the bone a little and your ligament went as far as it could go before it would ripped and he said you're pretty lucky because you'd be in surgery right now if that thing had ripped but um they sewed him back up and um they gave him they wanted him to take an antibiotic because he had been exposed to so much dirt and his bone and his ligaments and all that and they were concerned about that and it was interesting because um, my brother-in-law is also a physician. He's an emergency room physician, and I was talking to him about it. And it's interesting. He said now that when they prescribe antibiotics, they automatically tell you to include probiotics with it, which I thought was an interesting take um, that has not happened before. So I'm hoping that this is um, something that is happening. I, I, I mean, I'm not against antibiotics in any way, but I do think that it's it's a wonderful thing when you understand that probiotics are keeping you well and healthy most of the time. And so if there's ever any kind of emergency where you do need an antibiotic, I can teach you how to eat these foods that along with taking the antibiotic will help you keep your microbiome healthy and happy and strong. Because if you just take an antibiotic by itself and you don't build up that good bacteria, you're basically wiping out your good and your bad bacteria and take an antibiotic. And, I, and again, I'm not against antibiotics. I think they're necessary in certain cases, but I think they're overly prescribed. But if there is something that you need it for, when you do take it, you're wiping out the good and the bad bacteria. So you need to replenish that. And what happens is if you don't replenish that, then opportunistic um, pathogens, for instance, candida, will see all this room in for it to grow and multiply and spread out. And then you can get candida systemic, systemic infections and you can get yeast infections and all kinds of things. What will happen is candida says, woohoo, look at all this room that I can grow and multiply when it's supposed to be in a small amount in your body. So these foods are an attempt to show you how to live a healthy lifestyle, how to increase your microbiome, um, how to help yourself when you are in a situation where you, you need an antibiotic or you need something that, you know, if you're taking something that's wiped out your your gut flora, you can rebuild it and you can rebuild it stronger than you can imagine. And your body will assist you on that as long as you give it what it needs. And so I'm going to talk to you about all the different things that these probiotic foods that work so much better than supplements do in the body to help you and assist you each and every day. And uh, when you're faced with difficulties in your life, just remember, you have a hundred trillion microbes that are there to assist you. And if you work with them and realize the power of them, it can really change your life. Okay, so let's get started. What are cultured probiotic foods? Um, the ones that I love are kefir 
And there's different types of kefir. There is milk kefir, there's non-dairy kefir, there's water kefir, and all of them are wonderful. Um, and they're similar to yogurt, but much stronger. Most yogurt is three to seven bacteria, where kefir has 50, and that's in the milk and the non-dairy kefirs. The water kefir has about 11 to 12, and they're powerful. They do wonderful things for your body. And I, it's the first food I ever tried, and it made all the difference for me. Um, cultured vegetables, things like kimchi, krauts, pickles, they have um, special probiotics in them that are super powerful. Um, even sports people are recognizing the benefits of even drinking the cultured veggie brine from pickles and juices and things like that. Uh, there's so many electrolytes in that. It, it helps replenish the body, but it's powerful. And it can help you with colds and flus or any kind of stomach ailment, food poisoning. It is unbelievable the things it could do. It still blows my mind how many people write and tell me how much these foods have helped them when they've encountered some kind of a, a virus or some kind of a food poisoning and how quickly and how fast it can work. The other one is kombucha tea. It's a fermented tea and it has a special probiotic in it that cannot be killed by antibiotics and it's so powerful. This is one of the most uh, well-researched probiotics worldwide and it's abundant in kombucha and boy does it work powerfully well. And um, I also love uh, talking to you about the different types. You know, we're in this gluten epidemic right now where people are afraid of it and I love to talk to people about sourdough breads because they're made with lactobacillus, which is in the, back, the culture that you make the bread with that slowly rises the bread, that transforms the wheat and really changes the entire structure of the bread so so many people who are gluten intolerant can have it. And it's so important that we understand why there's so many problems with gluten today. Um, our bread is made very different. Our wheat is made very different. And stay tuned because this week, if you're really interested in this, I'm doing a special blog about a special uh, sourdough bread that has really changed my life in a powerful way. And I teach you how to make it. It's fun. It's fantastic. It's made from the most ancient wheat on the planet. It's where all of our wheat has come from. It's called icorn wheat. And um, I'm going to teach people how to make that on my Sunday morning blog. And if you're not a subscriber, head on over there and, and you'll get my weekly emails to keep you updated. But also you can just see it on my website at culturedfoodlife.com. Uh, but it is so, I've learned so much about um, the, the breads that we eat and why they wreak havoc on our gut. And I was so astounded to find that this bread, my body just loves this stuff. Um, I can tell it doesn't, it doesn't mess with blood sugars and keeps me having lots of energy as 30% more protein and it's fantastic. So head on over there this Sunday if you want to take a look at that because that's another wonderful life-changing thing for me and I hope it is for you too. And most of my shows are an attempt to change your mind about sickness and disease and to give you a strong strength and belief in your own wellness. And in spite of all the advances in medicine, um, so many people are more scared than ever about getting sick or diseases that can, can conflict them with them because they just, they see it all around them. And it's, it's really, even in the smaller children, it used to be that kids stayed pretty healthy most of their lives, except for, you know, a few colds and flus, but... Nowadays, kids are getting adult diseases like diabetes and insulin problems and um, high blood pressures and their children. And so many people are, are getting sick and, because they don't realize that they're not attending to the foods that they eat, uh, their microbiome, because uh, Hippocrates said all diseases begin in the gut. And honest to goodness, I've seen that again and again. And so few people are demonstrating through their own lives how good you can feel on an, on an everyday basis, and how healthy and strong your body actually is. And mostly people don't understand that the hundreds of processes in the bodies that are happening 24 hours a day, even while you're sleeping, um, they don't understand what's really going on. There's a whole universe inside there. And they don't understand the intelligence of the system and how it works. And there are trillions of microorganisms everywhere, and you just, you can't see them, so you don't give them much attention attention, but they are inhabiting you and everything else. And these hundred trillion bacteria that is 10 times the cells of your body, um, it, it's so astounding to me how much a hundred trillion is. 
And if you want to uh, understand, let's, let's, let me break that down for you. So to give you a point of reference of how much that is, if you took a canning jar and you placed another canning jar on top of it and you kept doing that and lined them up to span 14,000 miles, that is one trillion glass jars. And that's roughly the distance uh, from the middle of America to, say, Kansas City to uh, Beijing, China and back. That's how long that is. And uh, now you do that 100 times and you have 100 trillion. And it's a lot. So if you can get that in your mind of how many trillions of cells are in your body, it's hard to, hundreds of trillions of bacteria in your body, it's hard along with that and the cells in your body to imagine that number. And um, they're tiny, they're invisible to most, to the naked eye, but they're there and they're doing a mighty job. And I I love understanding that bacteria, as it does its job, it goes about destroying harmful pathogens too, but only if you have the right amount of good bacteria. And for instance, antibacterial soaps and dispensers that are everywhere, and now the, um, the FDA is not even recommending them any longer because they have a chemical in them called triclosan that is causing so much harm that they've actually uh, talked, they don't recommend it to people anymore. It's hard on the thyroid. And um, they really don't think that these antibacterial soaps do any, any better job at killing bacteria than soap and water. It's just in some convenient form. And now we're all accustomed to it, but it's really causing a really havoc on the immune system. I mean, it's causing all kinds of damage. And so um, they're really starting to rethink all of that. Um, antibiotics are plentifully used by people regularly. And they do kill both the good and the bad, like I talked about. And I also don't think that they're wrong, unless I think there are times when you do need them. But the more you build up your good bacteria, the more it's going to take care of you. And the less harm you're going to have when you take these types of antibiotics. And if you're going to find yourself understanding how to help your body rebuild its microbiome and how to stay really healthy. And it, it doesn't take... A lot of work, it just takes a little bit of consistency and a little bit of understanding. Okay, so if you are 100 trillion bacteria and 99% are harmless or good bacteria, don't you think you should pay attention to that? I mean, it is the most dominant organism on this planet. And something has created us in a way that we need these bacteria to breathe, to digest our food, to have vitamins and minerals to communicate with our immune system, to attack uh, any kind of a foreign invader or pathogen, to help us reduce inflammation, to help all of the systems and organs in our body to work uh, properly along with our muscles. And all of these things are going on unbeknownst to us um, with this extreme amount of intelligence and efficiency. And when we come along and just wipe it out with antibiotics and things and don't rebuild our guts, we get into trouble. And that's why there's a lot of people that aren't digesting their foods properly anymore. And it's a lot of the reason why there's so many food allergies. What they've discovered, and I've known this for years because my daughter had food allergies about uh, 13 or 14 years ago. And what I discovered is when I gave her a cultured food at every meal, her gut began to heal. And she was able to eat just about everything that she was allergic to after about a, a year of doing this every few months she'd put in a food she was allergic to and she wasn't allergic to it anymore. Well, fast forward many years later, and what I found out was researchers found out that having a lot of antibiotics, which she had, will destroy a certain, certain large um, species of bacteria in the gut that causes the body's ability to develop food allergies. And when you replace that bacteria back into the gut, which was which, what we were doing with cultured foods, her food allergies went away. And not only that, it changed everything for her. And it made such a difference in her life. So I told my friends about it. And a lot of my friends' kids had food allergies, and their food allergies started going away. And then many years later, I found out the research. And now I think there's like, oh my goodness, I think I've seen 12 studies all saying the same thing. Uh, they had a big one just out recently about peanut allergies. And that it was, again, it was missing the bacteria colostrum, I believe it was, which is a, like a 100 different subspecies in that um, 
and that's certain bacteria. So it's it really makes a huge difference when it's replaced back into the body because it does so many things. Bacteria work with purpose and direction, and they're very intelligent, and they have a complex system of chemical signals that go both within and among bacteria, helping them decide what to do and how to act. Um, in the April issue of the journal Trends in Microbiology, they found that the bacterial system contains all the important features that make the neural network function. And this, this is a really interesting study because it leads to the idea that bacteria have a minimum of a minimum form of intelligence. And this is really fascinating. For some of these strains, a bacteria will commit suicide when infected by a virus so that it will protect their bacterial neighbors from infection. So it sees that virus and it dies quickly so the virus can't engulf it and, and make it a part of its um, system so that it can grow and multiply. And um, they also, bacteria also cooperate. They group together on tasks that would be difficult or impossible for one to handle. And a single bacteria contains dozens of such systems operating at the same time for different purposes. And bacteria works in numbers. And when it gets a certain amount of numbers, it needs a lot of numbers, it kind of has to build a little bit of an army. And so when it has enough of those numbers, it does its job. But if it doesn't have enough, it doesn't. It's not able to complete its task because it's, it's a community down there. It, it works in a very complex intelligence system. And as you understand that, and you eat these probiotic foods that I talk about, what happens is you build up that strong army by eating lots of prebiotic foods, which are basically a fertilizer for bacteria. They're the food. They're fibers uh, in fruits and vegetables, nuts and seeds that allow bacteria to grow and multiply. They don't generally have the fiber part doesn't generally have any calories for us but it does for our bacteria and that's what's keeping us healthy so you and your bacteria are co-creators in this life and honestly you should be best friends with them i know that sounds weird but you should because you would be shocked at all the things they'll do for you um, we need good bacteria to digest our food um, and we also certain vitamins have to be synthesized by bacteria that we can't make on our own without them they um, also can form a, a barricade against disease-causing bacteria. And it's very, very cool how that works. For instance, um, they'll put like a, a barricade and they'll, they'll line the intestinal wall and they'll keep out harmful pathogens. And what happens is, too, this is so interesting, that if you don't feed your bacteria, they will start, eat, start to eat the mucosal lining of the gut, causing leaky gut syndrome and things like that because they don't have any food to eat. And so feeding your bacteria is essentially very, very important because um, you, they protect you from disease and they keep out harmful pathogens. Um, I had a, a lady write me today and she was talking about, um, she was going through menopause and she's worried about things. And, and she says, you know, as you go through menopause, you lose a lot of the lactobacillus that lines the vaginal area and uh, it decreases. And so having these foods can greatly help that because you're more prone to yeast infections and other things that can happen um, because it's diminished, because your hormones have diminished that may help supply that area with it. And by eating these foods, you're going to keep a constant supply in there that's going to really help you and your body. Um, now they're saying that bacteria controls um, everything from our taste buds to our weight to diabetes to Parkinson's. I mean, there is just the list is going on and on every day. I see something new. And um, I saw something about rheumatoid arthritis yesterday. And then I saw something else. I've, I've written several articles about autism. I've seen firsthand how it's, it helps so much if um, children are autistic because often they have well, not often, Most in most cases, they have completely different gut bacteria than a regular child does because something has happened um, from birth or from the time that maybe they've received a lot of antibiotics and some traumatic things going on, but their bacteria has shifted. And I have witnessed firsthand, in miraculous ways, seeing children really just change dramatically when they started having cultured foods. And if you'd like to see some of those stories, Head on over to my uh, website, culturefoodlife.com, and click the Lives Touched page and uh, look and see at some of those stories. They're heartfelt. They're, they're from the people themselves. I've got pictures on there. 
And uh, I just want to share with you guys because it's such a wonderful thing when we can find something as simple as food that can change us so profoundly. And these foods can definitely do that. When I first started to consume these foods, I got better. And not just better, I went from being really sick with diabetes and high blood pressure and chronic inflammation to feeling like I was aging backwards. And everything started working better. My brain was clear, my emotions were enhanced, my joint pain was gone, my allergies got better, serotonin produced those feelings of well-being, and my sadness and despair was gone. And they brought me here. They brought me back to life. And I was in a pretty sad state. And um, I never in a million years thought that the answers to my prayers would be in the form of invisible microbes that sat on my counter in my food and transformed my food, added more vitamins and minerals to it, and billions and billions of probiotics. And then as I ingested it, it changed me from the inside out. But that was the answer I was seeking. And it has changed everything, and it is an ongoing changing thing. It didn't just help me back then. It helps me now because there are things in my life that I've needed it for and what a difference these foods have made. And with your trillions of microbes, if you don't feed them, they will not grow and multiply and thrive. And when you get to know the bacteria inside of you, they will not only change your digestion and stomach problems, but you're going to see so many other health issues as well. And what's funny is it's so unique to the person. You know, I, I didn't know that it could help with all of the different ailments that people have, but people write to me and I know I posted something, I think yesterday or the day before on uh, kefir and acid reflex. And I saw all these people posting below how they all got off their medication. I think one lady was on there 22 years was on my Facebook page and it was, she was telling how she'd been on the medication for 22 years and how now she wasn't on it. And then somebody else posted they were off of it. Somebody, I mean, they were just, so it's not just me. I mean, it's, it's an amazing thing. And I've seen it so many times. Um, when you fix that, your, uh, acid reflex goes away when you start drinking kefir. And, uh, that was one of the, that was something that helped my husband. It was pretty profound. And so all of these foods do different things. And, um, you know, everybody's different. Everybody has different things that bother them. But what I've found is these three favorite, my favorite cultured foods, which is what I call the trilogy, kefir, kombucha, and cultured vegetables, um, do have different bacteria and different things in them that actually help the body in a more profound way. Um, I think the homemade items are stronger. You can buy a lot of these at the health food stores. Uh, but I think homemade's always better, but I, I do really like the, a lot of them at the health food stores too. And it's a good place to start if you want to try them. They, um, all of these foods kind of change you from the inside out. And I, here's an interesting thing. I actually talked to a lady, we have a, a biotic pro membership on my website and I have lots of extra videos and I have a live chat and, um, we have tons of lessons and courses and just a lot of eBooks we give out free every month. And uh, this one lady, I was talking to her in the live chat, and she told me how she was in the hospital, and she was spiraling downwards very fast, and it was these foods, uh, kefir, kombucha, and cultured vegetable that saved her. And they not only got rid of her eczema that she was covered in head to toe with, but they helped her um, stop this, a, a very bad infection that she had, um, that she'd been hospitalized for. And it um, just opened the gateway for her to find the wellness that she'd been seeking for uh, many, many years. And she couldn't believe how well it made her. And it was simply just food. It was just blew her mind. And for me, that was the same experience I had. You know, uh, it just hit me at my point of need. I couldn't find, I couldn't find wellness. I was seeking it. I had diabetes, high blood pressure. I was, I was a mess. Um, but Kiefer found me. I think Kiefer found me. And then the floodgates opened and I felt like a prisoner who was set fleet free because it just, it opened up my life in a way that I didn't expect. It, uh, made me realize how much life I had to live and how wonderful life could really be. And the reason I wasn't feeling that way was because I didn't feel good. I couldn't see, um, that the grass was super green and the birds were singing because it felt so bad all the time. I didn't feel good. And kefir with its billions of, of billions of bacterias, it just, 
It was the most wonderful thing when I started to consume it. It went past all my failures and horrible habits that I had. And it started to change me because I felt better. And because it made me feel better, um, I started to drink it every day because I noticed such a huge improvement. And then what happened was I started cleaning up everything else in my diet. And I started, you know, exercising again and doing things that made me feel better and better. And it just started with that one small change and my desire to feel better. And I just started drinking it every day. And when I did, I felt better. And then I could eat better because I had the energy to make things. And and it just snowballed. And little by little, I was just doing so well that all the things that I had been eating and wreaking habit on me were eliminated because it was almost like having a personal trainer. And you just have to seek wellness. And you, I didn't do it all at once. I did it a little at a time. And you just kind of have to shove out the put in the good stuff and it shoves out the bad stuff. And uh, it just changed everything in my life. Um, And it felt like, you know, the, it was the answer to my prayers. It felt like grace. It felt like something reached down to me and said, here, try this. And, um, you know, I love the phrase by Rumi, the poet that says, what you seek is seeking you. And um, that happened to me, you know, and if you're listening to me, I could be that voice that could encourage you. I hope I am. I hope that's why I do what I do. Um, You know, everything I do, I think about all the people that listen to me or read my blogs or buy my books. I'm constantly thinking about how I can help them. It's the whole reason I wrote my next blog, because people had sent me so many emails about it that I decided to research it and discover it because I wanted to help you. And lo and behold... Trying to help you helped me. And in the very beginning, when I started all this, I was really seeking to help my little infant daughter, Holly, because she had been born eight weeks premature. And I was really, I really used Kiefer to help her, and it transformed her so miraculously. But in the process, I started to drink it, and it changed me. So in essence, I helped her, but she saved me too. Because whenever you um, try to help someone else or try to, reach out to someone else, you get it back. You, what you, you know, what you put out is what you get back. And so my, my episode of trying to find wellness and my sickness, I'm so grateful for that. It was such a miserable time. It's hard to, it's hard to think back on it because I was so miserable, so sick. But I look back on it with such gratitude. It was such a blessing. It was, you know, the light was shining right down the road. I just couldn't see it yet. I didn't know that um, the answers were there for me because it just felt like a dark cloud was following me around. But it was there and the answers came. And so now I'm here trying to help you um, maybe just give you some hope. There's always hope, guys. There's always something out there um, that's reaching out to you. And the guidance that we get we're always getting what we need. It just doesn't come with a loud trumpet sometimes. It just comes in soft things that, you know, we get to choose whether we pay attention to or not. But I'm so thankful that I tried kefir. And then I had these other cultured foods, kombucha and cultured vegetables. Because it was the path less trodden. But it has made all the difference in my life. I feel blessed. And I want to share that with you. And I hope that you will feel better and that it will change your life and then you can help many others. Thanks for listening, guys. Um, I hope this helped uh, maybe encourage you to try some of these foods. Love your microbes. They'll love you back. There's a hundred trillion of them. So you're never, ever alone. You guys have a wonderful week and thanks for listening.